This exhibition is called Extemporary Art Out of Time. It's, an, it's a group exhibition of contemporary artists. Um, what's particular about these contemporary artists is that their art is not really contemporary, meaning their art does not really deal with the present so much as the past and the future. Um, in a world where everything accelerates from human population growth to loss of biodiversity to use of primary energy such as oil, um, all of these things they develop at accelerating speed. At, uh, these, these areas are characterized by exponential growth. Um, these areas they make us understand, and these graphs make us see how quickly the world is changing. And when the world is changing that quickly, the future uh, more and more quickly becomes the present, and the present more and more quickly becomes the past. Therefore, the present is contracting. The present is getting smaller and smaller. So small that it's almost impossible to grasp the present. So instead of trying to understand our world by looking at the present, they try to look, these artists try to look at where we come from and where we are heading. Um, so they also question how we understand time. Uh, normally we understand time in a linear way, so that we move from the past to the present to the future. Um, that is also the idea of progress. The idea of progress is that we move from a dark age into a bright future. But after the First World War, and especially after the Second World War, and now with climate change, it's more and more difficult to believe in progress, that mankind is moving like this towards a better future, a better world. So people, they start to think that maybe time unfolds in history in new ways, maybe in circular ways, for instance. For instance, um, one example could be um, that, um, for instance, when the permafrost starts to melt because of climate change, bacteria, viruses that we are no longer immune to, that are very, very old, thousands or millions of years old, they are revived, they come back they hunt us, they can kill us. Um, in that way, our future might also be our past. Um, we could also think of biotechnology um, that gives us maybe the possibility to revive dead species. Here in Russia, uh, there are uh, a lot of interest in trying to revive uh, the woolly mammoth. Um, and in this case, if you revive the woolly mammoth in the Pleistocene Park in Russia, then um, uh, the future will once again be the past. So you have to understand history, time, in another more circular way. So this entire exhibition is, is presenting artists uh, who question what time is and um, who do not so much look at the present as this point. They're more interested in some curves. Where do we come from? Where are we going? So to sum up what I've just been saying, these artists are not really contemporary, which means with time. They're rather extemporary. They are out of time. Over here we have the Danish artist Itzora Vesterberg. She is interested in medieval sculpture, as you find it in churches, but also in manuscripts. She's interested in what we call chimeras. It's composite creatures, creatures that are put together of different creatures, so a combination of snake and lion and so on. Um, in medieval times, chimeras, they were fancies. But maybe in the future, they will become a reality. Because right now, scientists 
the geneticists, they are working with cutting up, uh, cutting and pasting DNA strings uh, in such a way that they can maybe combine different animals. Or they are trying to enrich, for instance, a monkey's brain with the human cells. Behind me, we have Saratuga, who has made um, quite a complex video. But basically, she is interested in modern physics. And what I've been interested in um, with her work is that um, modern physics, physics is, is um, interested in this concept because Many modern physicists, they, they say that time is not a variable, it's not an important function um, when you're dealing with physics. Um, so basically they say that time does not really exist, but it's something uh, that exists mainly in the eye of the beholder. Uh, it's something that is created as an effect of the human mind. Uh, also that at certain levels, time might reverse, not, not at a nano level, but maybe at some, something you call a time level. Uh, sometimes the past uh, arrives before the present. Uh, yeah. So uh, these are some of the complicated issues that Sarah Kuhlman, a Russian artist, has also been with. This is another Danish artist called Emilia Elsborg. She is interested in how, among other things, the human body adapts to a world in rapid transformation. Um, the figure you see here behind me is maybe a bit human, um, maybe a bit um, snake-like, um, maybe a bit machine-like. It's like a cycle. It's like a combination of different bodies um, uh, trying to um, fit into one body, trying to um, adapt to a new environment uh, while it's changing. Like, like a cycle, for instance, that we all are to a certain extent today, where our bodies are extended by technology, whether it simply be an iPhone whether it be um, uh, augmented reality glasses or virtual reality glasses. This is a video and virtual reality installation by the Danish artist Jakob Kusk Steensen. Um, and this installation um, revolves around the resurrection of a dead species, a dead bird, a bird that went extinct. You can maybe hear the call. It's the call of the bird that the artist he heard on YouTube. Uh, he found out that that bird had gone extinct. So he decided to uh, revive it, reanimate it, and bring it back to life in virtual reality. So he recreated a Hawaiian island, uh, which used to be its habitat, and then he replaced re, replaced that animal on the island for the viewers to take on the uh, VR glasses to experience once again. But the bird does not really return uh, as we used to know it. I would say it rather returns as a monster, a bit like in the story of Frankenstein. Behind me you see Danish artist Rasmus Muir. He has made an installation for Perm Museum of Contemporary Art, which is like a tableau that presents animals that used to live in the Pleistocene many thousand years ago. It's mainly animals that were killed, um, supposedly, that is one theory, by human beings. Uh, we might have been hunting them down. In this installation, they sort of like come back and haunt us in the present, like ghosts, like flickering images in mirrors, 
when we look these animals in the eyes, uh, scratched into the mirrors, we also see our own image. It's we are mankind confronted face to face with the animals that our forefathers uh, might have killed off. In this room, we present artist Anton Vidokla, who was born and raised in Moscow, but uh, has moved to New York, um, the United States. Um, for the last five or six years, he's been working a lot on a movement called Russian Cosmism. Uh, at the end of the 19th century, all through the 20th century. The basic idea was shaped by a philosopher called Nikolai Fedorov, who believed um, that man was destined to eternal life across the universe. These films are a sort of visual essay about the ideas of Fedorov and other Russian cosmists. In in this room we have an installation by Danish artist Marie Munk. It's um, an installation that presents these strange objects uh, that seem very familiar due to their hyperrealist skin. At the same time, they are also very abstract. We cannot understand exactly how these organisms, they function. We do not understand their way of life. It's a bit like a um, biotechnological nightmare, or maybe just a biotechnological future that we are not capable of understanding in the present. We do not know what biotechnology will produce, what kind of creatures will pop up in the future. This video installation by Danish artist Stine Tessia is also dealing with biotechnology. The, the strange things we see on these screens are sort of like part technology, part human body. Um, I also think that these videos present images in a way that maybe a biotech company might present their products in the future. Much like Marie Monk's organisms, we do not exactly understand how they work or uh, what these creatures or whom they might serve. Uh, here it becomes almost absurd. In here we present the Canadian artist John Raffman. This is a video called Shadow Bane, Bane that presents a world where no human beings are in sight. It seems that Maybe there are only machines left. The voice might be that of a human being, but it might just as well be that of a machine. Maybe it's uh, the voice of an artificial intelligence. It seems like it's an artificial intelligence, a machine, a computer that is processing what uh, humanity, mankind, has left uh, of culture uh, on Earth. So it, it's like a desolate and grim image maybe of the future. Maybe of a world after the so-called singularity, which is the point in the future where artificial intelligence is imagined and believed to surpass human intelligence.